Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us this morning uh, for this very special Legacy Week national launch for 2021. Legacy Week is Legacy's national campaign to raise funds and awareness and to assist the families of veterans who have given their lives in defence of the nation. Now, Legacy Week runs from the 29th of August to the 4th of September, with that all important badge day that we all know so well, the big national fundraising day, and that'll be on Friday, the 3rd of September. So make sure you keep that in your diary. The theme for Legacy Week for 2021 is Little Badge, Big Impact. And I think that really says it all, Little Badge, Big Impact. Legacy currently provides support to around 43,000 Australians. It is a huge network doing incredible work. It is the second year in a row that this annual campaign has been disrupted by COVID. So we're all being encouraged to go to www.legacyweek.com.au to make donations and to buy the badges and the bears that we normally buy from the Defence Force personnel in the street or on the corners or down at the local shop. Uh, online is the way to do it this year. So keep that website in mind. It is a pleasure now to welcome the patron of Legacy Australia, a man who knows the importance of legacy to the families of our veterans, the Governor General of the Commonwealth of Australia, His Excellency General the Honourable David Hurley, ACDSC, and Her Excellency Mrs Linda Hurley as well. Governor General, Mrs Hurley, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Governor General, if I, if I can start with you and, and what it means to you to be the patron of Legacy Australia. Well, Mark, thank you and uh, good morning to all the viewers uh, today. Linda and I are really delighted to be part of this and it's a great honour uh, to be part of the launch of Legacy Week for this year. Again, as you mentioned, under difficult circumstances. Uh, I've been the patron of uh, Legacy uh, for the two years in this role and previously involved as Governor of New South Wales. Uh, I can't think of an organisation in Australia that speaks more of what Australia is about and who we are uh, than legacy. Uh, when in a difficult time, uh, mates turn together, bound together and said, we've got to look after uh, our, our, our friends, families who are uh, living back in Australia after the First World War and of course has carried on from there. Uh, it's just quintessential Australia. And to be asked to be the patron of it, uh, just an enormous degree on it. And can I ask you, what was your experience of legacy during your service in the Defence Force and in the Army? Well, I think when we were younger, we were out there selling badges. These things evolve over time. Uh, so in Canberra as a cadet, we were selling badges. And then as a junior officer and so on, you'd be either out there or organising on the day. When you become more senior in the organisation, it's that interaction about what's happening amongst our families, and of course, there's generational change when we were younger, mainly though Vietnam and World War II veterans. And then of course, that's changed in, in more recent years. But it's uh, keeping in contact with what's going on in families, issues that are out there and where you can affect that while I was serving uh, from a policy perspective, a discussion with the Minister for DBA and so forth. Um, and then continuing to keep that ceremonial link uh, for Legacy, uh, Anzac Day, Remembrance Day, uh, and again, supporting by authorising and providing the personnel to go out and collect a badge, uh, collect the funds for the badges, sell the badges. And we know that when you put your, someone in uniform on the street, they're the best sellers of Legacy badges. Uh, so always delighted to be able to provide uh, that support for Legacy. Yeah, it's a, it's a great tradition, isn't it? Uh, the theme for 2021 is Little Badge, Big Impact. That that really does sum it up, don't you think? It certainly does. Uh, you know, it is, it's, not a, it's not one of those big logos that jumps out at you these days. It's very simple. It's got uh, a lot of history behind it, you know, that passing on the torch. Uh, but it, it's just an enormous impact. When you mentioned 43,000 uh, families, people affected, uh, supported by legacy. When you go back to the First World War, you can imagine how big the numbers were at that time. It, it, there's so many people you, you run into who will talk about how legacy helped them as a child. Mm. And you don't have to scratch too far when you go out to communities to find people in that way. Yeah. So in difficult times for the nation after both World Wars in particular, when the society is traumatised, looking uh, for, you know, thinking about what the future looks like. Here we had this just solid organisation that has been there every year, every day for uh, members of defence families. So 
uh, enormous impact in the psyche of our country and I think in the lives it has value added to, given opportunity, help open doors uh, and support. I think, you know, what more could you say about an organisation that does that and does it so selfless, selflessly? It's yeah. just all volunteer, all uh, from here that uh, that support comes Mm. You make a good point. It is one of those charities that's so intertwined with, with Australia, with our, our culture. If I can go back to your time as Chief of Defence Force, Australia was devastated by what was then a, a green on blue attack in Afghanistan, taking the lives of, of Bryce Duffy and Ashley Burt and Luke Gavin. That was on the 29th of October 2011. Now, Legacy continues to support Mrs Jackie Gavin and Luke and, and Jackie's kids, Joshua, Holly and Olivia, to this day. Um, that's one of the examples of, of where legacy has really stepped in to help. And, and as you know, th there are so many cases like this. Look, I, I remember very clearly uh, Anzac Day in Sydney uh, when Bree Till was there with little Ziggy, who was only a, a baby at the time. Um, and uh, Bree spoke that morning. It was just a compelling story about uh, her life and where she was at the moment and what legacy meant to her. Um, I remember holding Brie, uh, sorry, Ziggy after that. Uh, he was pulling my uniform apart. We've got some great photos of it. But, uh, and now he's a you know, lovely young boy. Uh, but that's just a, a marvellous example of how legacy stepped in very early in our days in Afghanistan. Uh, and then more recently, Gwen Churn, uh, loss of her husband uh, through a suicide. Yeah, the, the scourge we have at the moment, uh, being so well looked after by legacy as well, when that family's just lost and uh, needs someone to come in. And uh, so, you, could, you know, there's so many of them, but every one of those families knows that there will be a knock on the door or a call very soon after an incident like that. The legacy there we go very quietly uh they'll be there when you're ready uh but they'll be there it's fantastic um, mrs hurley you know that role you know the importance of, of legacy to families of those who are actually deployed on operations and and the importance of i guess knowing that when you do need it if you do need it that support is there yeah absolutely you when david went on deployment um you know they're going and they're doing their job mm. and it was my job to keep the home fires burning and David was only away for four months and David came home. I just can't imagine what it would be like to if he had not come home mm. and and I've met so many ladies who have been helped by legacy um, and I think when you have that person come and knock on your door and say, you know, what can I do? How can I help? Um, I imagine that that would be a really wonderful moment um, to know that there are people out there who care and legacy do that. And I've had quite a bit to do with the, um, the older generation and I know that those ladies just embrace the fact that they have someone from Legacy, a leg team, who is going to, to be there to help them. And this room has been filled with older ladies having morning tea and their Legacy has brought them here, is there with them. And it means, it just means so much to those women. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's a great Australian tradition. Uh, they say for every serving Australian, there's, there's, there is more than one life at stake. And, and Mrs Hurley, that is very true, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, the day David returned, our children were quite young. And we went to the airport to meet, meet him in Townsville. And the minister at our church, he's passed away now, he wanted to come too. And I thought, that's really nice of you, but I really want to just be us. <laughs> anyway, God must have been on my side because he was held up. <laughs> and and um, 
and then he arrived later, which was lovely. But I wanted that moment just to be for me and my children. And that's when I burst into tears. And David said, why are you crying? I'm home. Um, but I think you just have all that built up. Um, you know, it's on your mind. And it was a wonderful moment for me. But there are so many ladies that haven't had, had that experience because they're men have come home, but they're not, they're not alive. So legacy is a very, very special organisation and all those legatees that just, they just do a wonderful job. Yeah, uh, they're superhuman. Um, at, at this point, I'd like to bring in Emily Johnson. Now, Emily also knows firsthand the importance of legacy. Legacy supported her and her mother and her brother following the death of her father, uh, Adam Connell, an East Timor and an Afghanistan veteran. Now, Emily, welcome to you and thank you for being with us this morning. C can I ask you please to just tell us a, a bit about your dad, uh, Adam Connell? Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for having me. Um, yeah, so my dad, Adam Connell, um, yeah, so he served in the Defence Force in the army sector uh, for 23 years before his passing and um, served in East Timor and Afghanistan. And yeah, my dad was my hero really. Um, he was the rock of our family and a big part of our lives. And so when we lost him, it was just, yeah, we all lost a piece of us. Um, and yeah, he just meant the world to me. And I was, I was daddy's little girl. I was, dad's princess um so yeah I lost a big part of my life hmm. what was that impact like on on the whole family yeah it was quite major um yeah he was the one that was there for all of us he was as I said the rock of the family um so losing him um yeah we lost a part of us all hmm. and um it's been a big challenge because we're now living a life that we almost didn't plan for. He was my mum's life partner for uh, 24, going on 25 years. Um, and yeah, so it's just a big thing going through life and having major events that happen, um, like getting married, graduating from uni and stuff like that, and not having him by my side. Um, yeah, it's really, really hard. Mm. Emily, did it change your role in the family? Yeah, it did indeed. I definitely um, stepped up and um, took on a big role for my family. Uh, I wanted to be the one that was strong for my mum and brother and was there for them. Um, my dad was the one who did all the finances in the family. And so um, my mum losing my dad, um, she wasn't able to cope with that and didn't understand a lot of that stuff. So I stepped up and I was um, helping her with her finances and everything like that. And yeah, just trying to be there for my family while also trying to continue to live my life and um, study and everything like that. So. Yeah. Emily, do you remember your, your first contact with Legacy? What what went on, how that came about? Yeah, so they, um, so it's about like maybe a week or two um, after my dad's funeral. Um, everyone who was supporting us, family, friends and the defence, it all started to fade away and we knew that and we had to get back to normal life as well. And that's just when Legacy stepped in and it was just a catch up with my mum for coffee and that's all it was. And they just explained to her what they do, um, that they'll be there for us if we ever need um, and if we need anything at all, just to contact them. So ever since then they have just they've been there for us um and it's just like the little things um a phone call to have a chat um a catch up for coffee or something like that it's just they're just there when we need them the most and I don't think they might not know how much that means to us but it means the world mm. and what what other sorts of support did did they offer to you yeah so there's um quite a bit of support they've offered to us um so I was um, in my third year of university when my dad passed away and um, when he passed, I had to defer my semester one exams and 
dealing with everything when I had to go back to uni for my second semester I had to prepare and study for exams from four months ago I had to get ready for new classes and everything like that and that's when legacy stepped in because I was under a lot of pressure and um, had a lot going on for myself and I was worried financially as well um, I didn't want to rely on my mum for anything um, so I was trying to work part-time as well so legacy just stepped in and um, I was fortunate enough to receive a scholarship um, through Westpac, which um, they offer to um, legacy members. And um, legacy also helps provide um, funds for me to purchase books and everything like that, because they're definitely not cheap. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's just, and like a little thing. So when I graduated from university, I had put up on social media that I had graduated. And that day when I went home, I was a bit sad because my dad wasn't there. My dad was a big encouragement for me to go to uni and um, finish it as well, even after his passing. And I came home and just, there was a big bunch of flowers on the front doorstep. And when I took them inside and looked at the card, I just, I just cried tears of happiness and joy because they were from legacy. And that just, it was something so little, but it just meant the world to me. And it just brightened up my day for a moment when I was actually feeling quite down. So. Mm. Emily, that's, that is a fantastic story. And, and thanks for sharing that with us. I think we, we don't always realise how long the legacy support extends out like that and, and how those little things make a little a, a massive difference. You, you've talked about actually the fact that legacy has provided your family with a, a sense of community and a sense of belonging and a bigger sense of family. Just to tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, they have. I, I don't know what it is, but it's just these strangers almost just came into our life and they just yeah make us feel like we've got another type of family and that is yeah legacy is family to us and it is a little sense of community so um when we have fundraisers and everything like that um our legacy always reaches out to us and asks us if we want to volunteer and we are more than happy to every single time when we can and it's just like going to those um, volunteering events and fundraising for Legacy and just being able to speak to defence members who are also volunteering and other Legacy members. It's just, um, it's really great and just gives us, yeah, a warm heart whenever we can do that. And yeah. yeah, it's definitely that community and family that they provide to us. So Emily, this year's theme for Legacy Week is Little Badge, Big Impact. And that actually really sounds like, like your story. <laughs> Uh, it is indeed. And yeah, Legacy, they've got, it's those little things that make a big impact in our life um, for my family and I. Um, and it's just, yeah, very warming and it's a great motto to have this year. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I think uh, at this point, Emily, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing that wonderful story. And um, I think your experience has been wonderful and it just encapsulates what Legacy is all about and that enduring support that comes with it. Uh, at this point, uh, to sort of move things towards the official part of our, our chat this morning, uh, Governor-General and Mrs Hurley, uh, I'm, I'm sure Emily's story re resonated with both of you. And I'd like to hand back to you both for a few final thoughts. And, and actually, before you officially launch Legacy Week for us, uh, Mrs Hurley, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, I have heard that you may have prepared something musical. And if you have, um, it would be wonderful to hear that if you would, please. Now? Yes. Right, that would be great. <laughs> In 1923, some veterans saw a need. Many wives and families were for ones who they grieved. Their mates would also thought, wanted to lend a hand. In Old Bart Legacy was started by Sir John Jelly Brand. Legacy has volunteers, they call them legatees. Out in our community, they work with grace and ease. War widows and their families are supported with great care. We are very thankful that Legacy is there. Legacy show kindness and help in many ways. A student's education, they're encouraged all the way. With guidance and assistance for their families. Legacy is there to support with 
with any need. Legacy continues helping defense families. All who have sacrificed their life for their country. Some of our young veterans have clumsy injuries. Legacy is there to help and meet with their needs. It's a national legacy week. Help our families out. Little badge, big impact. Legacy knows what they're about. Hey, Mrs. Hurley, thank you very much. That is excellent. And the amount of work you put into that, we really appreciate it. That's a great thing to have for the launch. So, uh, Governor General, I'll, I'll hand you for a few final thoughts, please, and uh, to officially kick off Legacy Week. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Emily, again, for your very heartwarming story about your family's relationship with Legacy. And I know, and you know, that that's uh, just repeated and duplicated throughout the country. And uh, thank you for that. It's my great honour now to officially launch uh, Legacy Week for 2021. Uh, please go out and uh, if you can in your particular state or territory, buy your badge, buy your bear. Uh, if you can't, if you're locked down like Linda and I are here in Canberra, please go to www.legacyweek.com.au, uh, uh, make a donation. More importantly, contact your friends and make sure everyone's aware that this is a really important week for an institution, an organisation, that is just central to who we are as Australians. So please, buy a badge, buy a beer. Uh, Governor General, Mrs Hurley, thank you very much. It, it means the world to have your support for this great charity and uh, we appreciate your time this morning. I wish we could see you in person, but that'll come soon enough. So thank you both very much. Mark, thank you very much. And Emily, thank you. Great thank you, Emily. Thank you both as well. Thank right. you, Mark, as well. Thank you. So around Australia... Oh, Go Legacy. Legacy Week will run from the 29th of August to the 4th of September. The all-important badge day, the big national fundraising day. Remember that date. It is Friday the 3rd of September. Lock it in in your mind. The theme for Legacy Week 2021 is Little Badge, Big Impact. It's such an important message. Little Badge, Big Impact. And remember, you can go to www.legacyweek.com.au to make your donations, as the Governor-General said. And you can buy your badges and your bears there. They are such an important part of Australian life. You've, you've got to have them every year. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Have a great day.